In the previous episode, we took a journey back in time, finding examples of prehistoric ants, some extinct and others surviving until modern day, discovering their common ancestor, the wasp, looking at the roots of their complex journey through evolution, dating back an estimated 130 million years ago. Now we will journey across continents. We will discover how the ants were able to dominate the planet and become the largest population of living creatures, excluding bacteria. Venturing back through the void of time, we find ourselves again in the tertiary period, their first great migrations, made possible by chance, timing and geography. Ants evolved while Pangaea was still a supercontinent. The continent started to separate 200 million years ago during the Triassic period, right up until around 50 million years ago, giving ants 16 plus million years to migrate across the supercontinent, splitting ant species between the two newly forming supercontinents, Eurasia and Gondwana. Many of the fracturing landmasses during this time period remained connected by land bridges. Through rapid expansion and colonization, ants took advantage of these connections to new lands, evolving with the climate changes every step of the way before the land bridges were lost to the sea. Ants finding more common ground with humans also started from what is considered to be a relatively small population. This all changed 100 million years ago as flora changed from being primarily cone and spore bearing species of pines and ferns to blooming flowers and bearing fruits. If you keep ants as pets, or perhaps you watch ants in the wild, you'll notice they have an insatiable appetite for sugars. In fact, adult ants live on a diet of sugars, a source of carbohydrates. This new evolution of flora introduced ants to develop co-evolution with other insects around them, also being drawn to this new source of food, drastically improving the ant's ability to hunt prey for proteins, diverting this precious resource to their larvae and queens, allowing fast development of brood and colony growth, protecting them from predators evolution of attack and defense. All this newfound energy was quickly taken advantage of, like our human ancestors discovering fire and cooking meat. Ants found the same bonuses from this new food source that had evolved to sustain them. Populations soon grow from colonies to great empires. Like all empires, their need for resources drives them further into new territories, pushing evolution to create 12,500 known species, with an estimated 22,000 species in total, many yet to be discovered. Also triggering a biological evolution with other creatures for reward. Take the modern day relationship of ants and aphids. Ants protect their herds that feed off plants. In return, the aphids process the plant sap and secrete sweet sugars for the ants to eat. An evolutionary biological barter system I've compared it previously to the dairy industry of humans and cows. Ants by this point have long defined their evolution from their ancestors, the Vespoid wasps, and branched out into many different variations. The planet has become two supercontinents, Eurasia and Gondwana. As the slow drift continues, ants continue their expansion. They have already crossed much of the landmass. Now they are trapped in their new ecosystems by the sea and the continental drift bringing an end to their first expansion across the planet. Ants now witness the rise of another social dynamic and industrial creature. You guessed it right, humans. As humans evolved, mastering the sea, spreading and dominating the world above, they started to settle and trade. Humans have always had a great desire for commodities from afar. Ants have found a new way to travel. Humans started to use ants in agriculture and keeping for food sources. In Africa, driver ants are used as pest control to drive pests away from crops. In the Americas, tribes started tending wild honeypot colonies. They have repletes and they are eaten as sugary treats. In the South Americas, tribes use the venom of bullet ants to bring on trance-like states and carry out coming-of-age rituals. Long before humans considered their environmental impact, 
only a very recent and modern consideration. During our great expansion, especially in the late 1700s and early 1800s, when we became global traders, the British Empire shipping goods from afar, plants, building materials, woods, fruits, sugars, and a host of other products that ants would use to their advantage or be attracted to, again finding themselves able to travel the world and expand into territories they had long been separated from. Solenopsis invicta, the red imported fire ant, is so infamous for its expansion through human trade. Its description states the word imported. Travelling from its native lands in South America, in the Pantanal region along the Paraguay River, a highly invasive species, now found in several countries around the world, including China, Australia, New Zealand, the Caribbean, and arriving in Alabama in the US during World War II between 1933 and 1945 through trade with Argentina. Since this introduction, they now span 13 states and occupy 128 million hectares of land. Solenopsis expansion through human trade has been officially documented as recently as 1981 to Puerto Rico. More recent studies have come to the conclusion that this species has been traveling through human commerce for at least 160 years. This is just one example of how rapidly ants are able to spread across a landmass. They started their expansion in the tertiary period, 66 million years ago, first taking advantage of the still connected landmass, then taking advantage of humans as they spread across the globe to be the second species to achieve such a feat after ants themselves. Ants even once roamed across Antarctica but this was long before it was an icy wasteland. At least I should say their ancestors roamed in Antarctica. Once it was a lush tropical forested region, it's actually unknown as to why it froze over. Today, you can no longer find ants there. Ants are not found in Greenland or Iceland. In these regions, the environments are too cold. Being cold-blooded, all ants need a degree of heat to survive. In colder climates, they have developed the ability to hibernate, giving them the chance to survive winter months. A discovery in the year 2000, the largest single expanse of territory belonging to a single colony on planet Earth is 3,700 miles or 6,000 kilometers, an invasive species to Europe. Their empire stretches from northern Italy through the south of France along the Atlantic coast of Spain. Linepithema humile, aka the Argentine ant. This species invaded Europe over 80 years ago. Ants that adapt quickly and become invasive often show unique or unusual behaviors or traits outside of the norm. This species chose to cooperate on a grand scale. They formed a super colony. The workers and queens all cooperate this earned the species a spot in the Guinness Book of Records. This level of cooperation has not been witnessed in any other species on the planet and has allowed them to completely dominate a mind-boggling stretch of land. If you took a worker from Spain and put it next to a worker in Italy, they would not show any aggression towards one another and will go about their daily duties as if they had always been a part of that section of the colony. Argentine ants have also established themselves in the United States of America, across the state of California, spanning from San Diego to San Francisco, first recorded in 1907. They dominate a 560 mile or 900 kilometer expanse of territory, using the same tactic of cooperation they used to create their super colony in Southern Europe. It is currently agreed through science that the Argentine ants from the three largest super colonies on the globe, Southern Europe, America and Japan, are so closely related through genetics, they now consider these three colonies to be one single super colony, a true empire. Think back perhaps to the British Empire and their reach through colonization. Japan's super colony spans just over one square mile. 
However, they have an impressive real estate, boasting 45,000 connected and cooperating nests, a combined population of 1.1 million queens, and an estimated 306 million workers. This colony is the eldest of the three, thought to have been founded over a thousand years ago. A fourth colony, despite the country's zero tolerance policy and extermination, has reached a 62 mile, 100 kilometer expanse in Australia, a country that has a history of problems with invasive species. This colony is currently being studied for links to the other known super colonies. This species, by the end of 2020, has been recorded in 15 countries across six continents. Despite this species' dominance across the globe, they are scarcely found in the same numbers across their homelands of northern Argentina, where they do not possess the same levels of cooperation as they do where they are found to be invasive. In this episode, we took a journey across the globe, looking at how sheer chance of geography and an evolution of a new food source aided the ants in their first expanse across the continents. When the world was still connected by land, before the sea claimed the last land bridge in Europe, we have seen how ants have exploited human achievements, using our advances in trade and travel, hitching a ride to expand their own territories, discovering ants are highly adaptable both socially and evolutionary. Ants learn to adapt, learning new behaviours or evolving new adaptations. Ants are highly adaptable on an evolutionary scale. We discovered that a species of ant that measures a mere 2.2 to 2.8 millimetres has colonised land masses on a scale only ever achieved previously by humans. Let's hope this species does not achieve its goals of global colonisation. Many human governments and scientific groups across the globe are waging war with this tiny invader known as the Argentine ant. Get involved and help us decide the topic of episode 4, exploring the complex and dynamic social structures within ant colonies, or an in-depth look at ant biology and some of their incredible adaptations as we take another journey exploring planet ants.